Loudon Castle is now one of the best family theme parks in Scotland, with new rides, new entertainment, and a new Pirates Cove. Aha, me hearties and shiver my timber! Call now for more information or visit our new website. In East Ayrshire, you can find the town of Galston, home of Bar Castle, the Galston handball game, and also the location that the Burn Anne joins the River Irvin. But just a mile north of Galston town lies an abandoned site that may not seem like much to the eye now, but actually has quite an unexpected history. It may seem that this area is just the final resting place of some castle ruins, however it actually played a very significant part in Scottish entertainment like no other castle in Scotland ever has, and some viewers might actually have some fond memories of it. So what happened? From tales of haunted spectres, to the site's life after death, today we're going to be looking into how a castle in ruins turned into Scotland's best family theme park, which state it is currently in and why this area has become a hidden part of Ayrshire and its history. The construction of Loudoun Castle can be dated as far back as the 15th century and eventually was extended with the keep in the 17th century and turned into a country house in the 19th century for Flora Muir Campbell. With the architectural know-how of Archibald Elliot, he helped turn this castle into the official residence of the Muir Campbell family, who were the Earls of Loudoun. After its improvements from 1804 to 1811, it became known as the Windsor of Scotland, earning the name due to the size of the castle as it hosted 90 apartments and included a regal library that measured up to 100 feet in length and was capable of holding beyond 11,000 volumes within it. There were also plans for a banqueting hall to be included but the hall was never made due to a lack of funds for it. Money problems are hardly a surprise as the improvements are estimated to have cost over £100,000, which, adjusted for inflation, would be over £3.5 million pounds in today's money. It's claimed that the castle had an escape tunnel which led as far as Cessnock Castle. However, the only proof of that was a small passage that was found in the old kitchens, which led to a tunnel-like bridge here at the Hag Burn, but it seems that the passage was more likely a drainage tunnel. And since the Hag Burn and Cessnock Castle are in different directions of Loudoun Castle, it seems unlikely that this tunnel originally led there. Although he was executed years before the origin of the castle, William Wallace still has his own ties to the location, as Wallace is claimed to be a relative of the Loudons through his mother, Margaret Crawford. According to the antiquarian, one of Wallace's swords was a family heirloom, and it would eventually be hung in Loudon Castle's entrance hall, placed in a position of honour. It was eventually moved from the castle, however, and a large replica was erected at the Loudon Castle theme park. During the Second World War, the castle was used by Belgian troops and in 1941, mere days before the castle was set to be leased to the War Office as military HQ, the roof was accidentally set on fire and it burned into the ruins that live here today. There have been claims that the site of the castle is haunted, with multiple different ghosts being claimed to call the location home. People have claimed sightings of a black monk in the area, as the castle had a chapel inside it. There were also claims of a grey lady haunting the castle, but no claimed sightings of her came after the destruction of the castle. The location has also seen claims of a dog with glowing eyes, and some stories of a ghostly piper. The castle laid in ruin for 50 years after its destruction, until a London-based company acquired ownership of the site, and after investing two and a half million pounds in developing it, the site opened in 1995 as Loudoun Castle Theme Park. In the park's first year, ticket sales were doing well, but it quickly found financial struggles and would be closed for a period of time in 1998 before the park would be purchased by Raymond Cadona. However, 
This new ownership would only last four years as Godona decided to retire in 2002 and the park changed hands once again when it was sold to Henk Bembum. Bembum would invest £5 million in his first year of owning the park, bringing in new rides and attractions every year, eventually taking some rides from Dreamland Margate in Kent, another park that was under the ownership of the Bembum brothers at the time. The moved attractions would include some rides that had appeared in the Only Fools and Horses Christmas special, titled The Jolly Boys Outing. However, the cost of bringing new rides every year and maintaining them would start to apply financial pressures on the park because since 2003, the park was selling less and less tickets than expected. At 11.45am on the 15th of July in 2007, tragedy would strike the park. Mark Blackwood, an 18 year old ride operator, was working on a ride known as the Rat. Mark was thrown from the cart, falling 80 feet. He was taken to Crosshouse Hospital in Kilmarnock. However, he sadly succumbed to his injuries the following day. This incident led to a two-week trial, taking place at the Sheriff's County Court in Kilmarnock in 2009. The trial ended with Parkware Limited, the company that owned the park, to be found not guilty on failing to provide proper training and supervision. However, a not guilty verdict would not be enough to save the park from the court of public opinion. In September of 2010, the park would close for good. Henk Bembem attributed the park's closure to no longer being financially viable, with failed accounts implying that the park was never making a profit under Henk's ownership. It is possible that the death of Mark Blackwood did play its role in this decision though, as having a death at the park likely further impacted sales. The rides were put up for sale in 2011. Today, most of the rides that the site once called home have been sold on or dismantled and the castle has been fenced off. Plans had been submitted to the council in 2014 to redevelop the area the plans would have seen homes and holiday lodges being built, as well as glamping pitches, a water park, and even a distillery. However, the council rejected each of those plans. That does not mean that the site has been left completely abandoned since its closure, as since 2021, at the Flix Drive-In has claimed Loudoun Castle as its home, hosting a Halloween and Christmas event in 2021, and having planned a Halloween event in 2022, which was eventually cancelled due to a lack of interest in the event. It is uncertain whether at the Flix plan on continuing to use the site for drive-in showings again. The castle ruins are protected as a Category A listed building, which limits the possibilities for future redevelopment on the site. However, East Ayrshire Council have stated that they would like to restore the castle and include a leisure development on the site, so there may still be an interesting future left for this location. The site has also become a popular urban exploration area. Although it's private property, there isn't much signage to warn of that fact. The castle can however be seen from areas within Galston and certain right to roam walk paths in the area. It is hard to believe that Loudoun Castle has been left to become a site of no entry with such an interesting history to it and castle ruins in better condition than some of Scotland's other ruins such as Ardrossan Castle. It is very disappointing to see the site being left to time, overgrown and mostly forgotten. However, if the site can find life as a theme park 50 years after the castle's initial destruction and serve as a location for a drive-in theatre 10 years after the closure of the theme park, then perhaps there is still hope for the site finding new life. Perhaps if the castle were to be restored, it could host visitors again and allow us to fully appreciate the grandiose castle that once had 90 apartments and housed William Wallace's sword. Thanks for watching this episode of Hidden Ayrshire. If you got the chance to visit Loudoun Castle while it was still active as a theme park, please share your thoughts on what it was like in the comments.
If you're interested in hearing about more hidden or historic areas in Ayrshire, then consider subscribing. If you have any locations you'd like to see covered, then let us know in the comments and your suggestion might be the subject of a future video. Thank you for watching.